Hey everyone, it's Dave. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Hope you're having a good day. Today, it's time for another edition of Rocket Lab Updates. Before we dive into that, hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button if you are new here, and if you're not, those likes, comments, and shares always help out as well with the algorithms. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into this week's Rocket Lab Updates. Starting off with the stock as usual, it's quite a nice day today, up 8% despite a fairly flat day on the overall markets following uh, what was a great day on Friday. Friday. So uh, nice little outperformance from Rocket Lab on the back of that successful launch we had yesterday, Live, Laugh, Love. Uh, little unusual for the company because often when you have a successful launch, we actually see a little bit of a sell-off afterwards, at least historically. But the company has definitely been showing some nice strength over the past few days and kind of bucking that downward trend it's been on for the last couple months. Um, Continuing on, of course, our first piece of news is Live, Laugh, Love, Rocket Lab's Electron's 70th launch. The mission did lift off from Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand on August 23rd, less than three weeks after Electron's previously successful launch from the same site. Live, Laugh, Launch was Electron's 12th mission of 2025 as Rocket Lab continues to execute on an accelerated schedule of Electron launches, including a record-setting prior quarter of two launches flown just two days apart from the same launch complex. This was a confidential customer, but uh, widely believed to be Echo Star from what I've seen online, although I, I can't confirm that 100%, but it is uh, there at least it seems to be some clues in that direction. The launch coverage did also include some pretty cool shots of Rocket Lab's Archimedes engine testing, and it really looks good to me. I'm not going to lie, those flames looking a nice bright blue with the mock diamonds. Uh, really outstanding quality video and uh, very happy that Rocket Lab squeezed that in there. They often squeeze in some nice tidbits for us fans during the launch coverage. So if you didn't see the launch, it definitely is work worth checking out that coverage uh, just for some of those other tidbits that we do get beforehand. And of course, seeing an absolutely flawless launch with the new coverage, including uh, audio as well as improved cameras definitely helps out as well. Uh, I found this meme pretty funny on the Discord server. Someone shared it, so I figured I would just reshare uh, <laughs> Electron basically crowning itself uh, after a new record. Uh, what can I say? It's just the dominant small launch vehicle and nothing else comes even close. Continuing on, though... Rocket Lab does have a shareholder vote coming up, and usually I don't consider these to be especially important, but this one is a little bit more important than usual, so I figured I would just highlight it for you guys in case you're not aware. Uh, even Sir Peter Beck saying, super important, please vote your shares. So if Peter asks us to do it, you can bet I'm going to go ahead and do it, and a lot of us are as well. So the reason that this vote seems to be a little bit more important than usual is Rocket Lab is changing its structure, as we've seen them talk about previously. And this vote, which uh, has some other provisions in it, requires an affirmative vote of not less than 66 and two-thirds percent of the voting power of the shares. Non-voters will account as votes against, so they really need at least 66 percent of shareholders to vote their shares in favor. So I you know, recommend everyone to go and do their part vote with the board and Peter, assuming you do trust management like I do. But um, yeah, just wanted to put that one out there. Okay, before we continue on to our next story, I did just want to make a little bit of an announcement here that I'm joining a new platform called Slice App as a mentor. And the first thing I want to say about this is it will have absolutely no impact on the YouTube channel. Nothing will change here. I'll continue making the same videos that you're used to. Uh, what this is is basically a more premium platform while I'll, where I'll make sure to try and make myself available to answer messages and have discussions with people should you want to about investments as well as making some 
extra posts that are kind of private to that platform. I'm going to also share my complete portfolio and every trade I'm making right now on the channel, as I have done since the beginning, I will continue to share my trades around Rocket Lab and the companies I do cover, but uh, have always been a little bit vague about the entire portfolio. So on this platform, I'll be completely open about it and just try to make myself more available for anyone who wants to talk because, you know, my channel is still pretty, pretty small, but it does get hard hard to answer all the messages when you talk about X or Twitter, Discord, YouTube comments, emails, all the rest. So uh, if people do want to spring for a membership here, I'll, I'll do my best to make that a priority. But do want to emphasize that, you know, if it's not in your budget to sign up for this, completely understandable. And I will continue making that content. And even if for some reason you're like, screw Dave, I don't want to hit like, I don't want to subscribe, but I just want to watch his videos. Uh, you guys are still appreciated as well, for sure. So just put that out there don't want to be pushy about it or be like a hard sell that's not really my style but i will try and provide some value and not just be you know like a cash grab type thing so um yeah if you're interested in checking out slice app there will be a link down in description below and i welcome feedback on that as always they are also offering a promo code if you want to sign up in the first few days it is 50 percent off the promo code is dave 50 if you're interested in that as well okay continuing on now Rocket Lab did announce an investment that caused a good deal of confusion. Now, this expanded U.S. investments for national security programs and semiconductor manufacturing, part of the CHIPS Act, where basically the U.S. government is offering incentives to try and bring, you know, technologies that touch on national security and uh, semiconductors, things of that nature, back to the United States and the advanced solar cells that Rocket Lab works on with their Solero business does fall under this. Um, the confusing part is that this is the exact same amount of money that was previously announced all the way back in 2024. So $23.9 million of funding through the, the federal government. They also received some funding through the state government. Um, and I read this as the same money as before, but it is kind of, um, you know, putting a stamp on it of the current administration, if you will. Uh, love to hear your comments if you think this is a new $23.9 million, but that precise number just seems too exact to me. Uh, and I think it's more of like a... Uh, a endorsement, if you will, from the current administration and putting their stamp on it. But I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, through this investment, Rocket Lab's looking to double the capacity of their uh, space grade solar cells from 20,000 to 35,000. That, that doesn't seem like a double to me. So that was a little bit odd as well. But that's what they're looking for. And uh, sounds like it will also help with the Geost acquisition, which has now closed and does touch on national security, of course, as it you know has those space based sensors that are so important for defense. So a uh, bit of an odd story there, but yeah, it, it is a, um, it is what it is. Uh, continuing on, as I did mention, Rocket Lab's Geost acquisition has closed, which is quite exciting for the company. It was announced back on May 27th and uh, was completed for $275 million in total, which is 125 in cash and three point five seven million dollars or million shares with that we did get an sec filing to see yes those shares are being issued 3.057 million shares so excited to see that deal close and geos join the rocket lab team on the space system side of things hopefully now that this is closed we'll be able to get some more details on the business and like how much backlog it will bring what kind of a revenue run rate it's currently at how fast it's been growing and all those good things that we haven't really known about as of yet because they've been kind of waiting till the deal closes to disclose some of that stuff, which is understandable, of course, because up until that point, you're still talking about someone else's business at the end of the day, if you're Rocket Labs executives. Uh, Stiefel did release a report saying that they are assuming assuming an implied annual run rate for Geost of about $60 million. So you have to assume that they have some pretty good information on that. 
uh, in absence of any other info, I am going to have to assume that Geost is adding about $60 million annually to the top line. And hopefully we'll get some more information from management in the future now that that deal has closed. But yeah, that was an exciting piece of news for me personally. Uh, just one thing that I had to point out because it was kind of fun more than anything. And it's always funny when I see this. I'm still not used to it, I have to admit. Uh, look who is quoted on this article about the uh, acquisition. <laughs> Dave G Investing noted that while revenue growth has been fabulous, the path to profitability is still weighed down by heavy investment. And it's just fun to see myself quoted on articles. <laughs> I don't know why, why I'm really bringing this up, but yeah, it was pretty interesting. This article also talking about Stiefel raising their price target from $34 to $55, implying 25% upside from the day when the article was published. Uh, continuing on, we do have a Deutsche Bank by rating from the company. Uh, not going to go into this in too much details, and it is a little bit stale from August 11th, but I figured it was worth a look. Their price target, $45, so a little bit lower than that Stiefel one, but uh, still also with a buy rating on the company. Uh, continuing on, talking a little bit about the Moneric acquisition now. Their restructuring has been completed. So this will help clear the way for Rocket Lab to acquire Moneric. This was kind of a uh, critical step before the acquisition could proceed. And now that it's done, this will allow for the potential sale of Moneric to Rocket Lab now that their restructuring and the debt has been dealt with. So exciting to see that that acquisition is looking good as well. Uh, speaking of Moneric, Francisco, who is definitely a good follow on X, and I've uh, known him on there for quite a while now, <laughs> a couple old hands when it comes to Rocket Lab investing, uh, shared a picture of the York Trans Tranche 1 satellites for the SDA. And we can see on there some of the Mark III terminals from Moneric. So it seems to be a good sign in terms of their production of those Mark III terminals because we know they were having some issues and it was causing some delays for the previous tranches. And one of the reasons Rocket Lab uh, brought it in-house to ensure a reliable supply of this critical piece of tech. So um, nice, you know, pretty anecdotal, but it does look like a good sign for Neric. Also on Rocket Lab's Neutron webpage, uh, we can see that the Launch Complex 3 construction has now turned to green from yellow. Pretty exciting. Uh, so they're basically saying the Launch Complex is ready to go here for Neutron's maiden flight. Now, of course, there will be continuous uh, improvements to the launch complex. This is just kind of like the bare bones minimum needed in order to have of a first launch successfully, but I'm sure work will continue as, uh, as well on the production site. But this is kind of... Um, an important piece, not just because it's needed for launch, but you kind of need some of that infrastructure to complete these other items, right? Like you can't really integrate the vehicle without somewhere to stick the vehicle. You can't test that first, that second stage without a second stage test stand there and uh, the like. So it is kind of a critical piece uh, enabling some of these other items, which is pretty interesting. Also, uh, if you remember me talking previously about Rocket Lab getting some of those big neutron parts to the launch complex to get assembled and ready to go, they're having some issues with that, and there were some articles about it that were saying it was the end of the world. Uh, they did get their permit for kedging, but not dredging, but kedging, which will allow them to basically use a system of anchors and uh, lines to get those large pieces of neutron structural hardware across this um, basically shallow river that they're going to be using. And, and they do have a dredging permit for making it deeper so that this kedging process will not be needed on a uh, permanent basis. Um, you know, not a major issue because ultimately they were going to get the parts there one way or another, whether it was pulling up the barges onto a beach or through kedging or something. And uh, they just got it done. So another good sign of progress for Neutron. Uh, now, finally, I did just want to address what's going on with uh, the exciting LC3 opening event on August 28th. And I think a lot of you are aware that there was a raffle for 10 retail investors 
to get the chance to go to the event, which I think is amazing and awesome. Uh, me, Vince, and the other guys who often do the Rocket Lab Weekly did get invited to attend, which is super exciting and absolutely amazing. So unfortunately for me, I'm a Canadian citizen, making the approvals take a little bit longer. And in addition to that, I'm also a bit of an idiot and my passport was expired when I received this invite. So I had to kind of rush to get it renewed and pay for a expedited renewal. It still took uh, a little bit longer than we would have liked to get that renewed passport. Uh, basically, long and short of it is that it's still in the works, me getting approval to go on the actual launch range. And that's not a Rocket Lab thing. That's a, a NASA thing because it's a it's a federal range. It's not just a Rocket Lab site. So I think I'm going to go <laughs> and kind of just hope I get approval by the time the event starts. Uh, we'll see what happens here. So <laughs> uh, cross your fingers for me. I might end up flying down to Wallops and just kind of sit in the hotel room while some of the other guys get to go and see the new launch site. But, uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, I guess. So, you know, if there's a chance of going and actually seeing it, I think I would rather, uh, I'd rather pay to go and not be able to go on site than play it safe and not go and, uh, miss out on that opportunity. Of course, the flight is not an insect significant amount of money for me and there's certainly no way i would uh make that back on a video or two that i make on the site so financially it will be a loser but i think it's just uh, a very exciting opportunity and something i would have never imagined i would have got the chance to do when i started this channel uh very grateful to rocket lab and uh Muriel and even Vince has really pushed hard to try and get my permissions through. So thank you to Vince, uh, really trying to get me approved and, um, yeah, we'll see what happens, I guess. So I may or may not be there <laughs> at opening day. It'll be, uh, it'll be a close one. Um, but it'll be interesting anyway. So, um, congratulations to the shareholders who won the raffle and will get to attend. Maybe I'll see you there. Um, I'll definitely be in the state if not on the actual launch complex, but, uh, exciting stuff and, uh, stay tuned for more of that. Of course, it's mostly my fault for not keeping my passport up to date, but, um, yeah, wasn't really expecting travel. So did kind of catch me off guard a little bit and the, the approvals, uh, understandably are a little bit more difficult for, uh, foreign nationals than people who are in the United States, which is why the, the contest was, uh, just for shareholders who are American, unfortunately, for those of us who come from abroad. So those are the updates I have for you today. If you are interested in Slice, feel free to check out the link down below. But of course, no pressure and the content on the channel will not be changing at all. Just can't emphasize that enough. Uh, I do hope to be able to bring you guys some cool coverage from Wallops and the opening of the launch site. Pretty excited for that. Uh, <laughs> it's coming down to the wire one way or another, the security clearances, but it's going to be interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But uh, more than anything else, just thank you for watching. Very much appreciated everyone who always tunes in when I do make videos. Hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I will see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.